Sir Topham Hatt gave Gordon a rest when he came back from London. James shall do your work, he said. James loved pulling the express. He loved to show off his smart red paint and was determined to be as fast as Gordon. He soon became very conceited about it. You know, little Toby, I'm an important engine now. Everybody knows it. They come in crowds to see me flash by. The heaviest train makes no difference. I'm as regular as clockwork, never late, always on time. That's me. Says you, replied Toby cheekily. Toby was out on the main line. Sir Tom Hatt had sent him to the works. His pass were worn. They clanked as he trundled along. Toby had wanted to take Henrietta, but Sir Tom Hatt said, No, what would the passengers do without her? Percy had promised to look after her, but Toby couldn't help but worry. Percy doesn't understand her like I do, he said. Toby was a little engine, and his tanks didn't hold much water, so he often had to stop for a drink. He had small wheels too, so he couldn't go fast. Never mind, he thought. The single men all know me. They'll give me plenty of time. He felt thirsty and tired. He had come a long way. He saw a distant signal. Good, he thought. Now I can have a nice drink and rest in a siding till James has gone by. Toby's driver thought so too. They stopped by the water tower. His fireman jumped out and put the hose in his tank. Toby was enjoying his drink when the signalman came up. Toby had never seen him before. No time for that, said the signalman. We must clear the line for the express. Right, said the driver. We'll wait in the siding. No good, said the signalman. It's full of trucks. You'll have to hurry to the next station. They've got plenty of room for you there. Poor Toby clanked sadly away. I must hurry, I must hurry, he panted. But hurrying used a lot of water, and his tanks were soon empty. They damped down his fire and struggled on, but they soon ran out of steam and stood marooned on the main line, far away from the next station. The fireman walked back. He put detonators on the line to warn James and his driver. Then he hurried along the sleepers. I'll tell that signalman something, he said grimly. James was fuming when Toby's fireman arrived and explained what had happened. My fault, said the signalman. I didn't understand about Toby. Now, James, said his driver, you'll have to push him. What? Me? Stuttered James. Me? Push Toby and pull my train? Yes, you. Shan't. The driver, the fireman, the passengers and the guard all said he was a bad engine. All right, all right, grumbled James. And he puffed away. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on you, he said crossly. James pushed Toby all the way to the works. He had to work very hard, and when he reached the workstation, he felt exhausted. Some little boys ran along the platform. Coo, said one, the express is late. A double header too. You know what I think, said another. I think that James couldn't pull the train, so Toby had to help him. Never mind, James, said Toby. They're only teasing. Caw, said James, and disappeared in a cloud of steam. Toby just laughed. <laughs>